G'day, I'm Daniel. Welcome to the DFL3 and welcome to Sydney. That's right, today you join me at Chatswood Station in the north of Sydney. And today, for the first time ever, we're taking the Fleet Review Series International. Welcome to the Sydney Trains and Metro Fleet Review. So, without any further ado, let's go. So, the trains I'll be reviewing in this video in order are the Sydney Metro Metropolis stock, the A and B sets, collectively known as the Waratahs, which are so similar I'm going to lump their review basically into one, the T set, also known as the Tangaras, the H sets, also known as the Oscars, the M sets, also known as the Millenniums, and finally the K sets. Anyway, with that out of the way, let's go check them out, starting with the Sydney Metro. Got my Opal card at the ready. Sydney Metro. First thing to note, driverless. I totally didn't just hit my head on the pole there. Um, so yeah, you can uh, see out the front. So yeah, that's very cool. Also, uh, have up seating for wheelchair spaces, uh, longitudinal seating, the only type you find on the Sydney network. Um, so yeah, um, this is a, a completely unique train for the Sydney network. Obviously, unfortunately, um, as you can see on this map, the metro was supposed to open to Sydenham uh, while I was here. But um, as any of you who read the article in which I was featured in the Sydney Morning Herald, that did not happen. So you're stuck with me going to uh, Epping and back for this video. Stop service to Tarawan. The next stop is North Ryde. It's a metro service, so you're not going to be on it for too long. So it's it's certainly not bad. Um, obviously, as I mentioned, the longitudinal seating I believe is the only one on the uh, Sydney Trains network, except for the uh, sort of middle parts of the rest of the Sydney Trains. You'll see what I mean when I show you those. Um, but the upper and lower decks, and yes, all other trains are double decker except for these ones. So again, making them unique to Sydney. Um, are all transverse. So yeah, this is certainly a very unique train for Sydney. Although it does remind me a lot of the tube stock back in London, especially the Jubilee line, as you'll see when I get out. This stop is North Ryde. Obviously the first thing that many people notice about the Sydney Metro is that it has platform screen doors, which is obviously helpful for safety purposes. I also noticed that the doors extend further than the train does it. I believe every station. So they've made the platforms longer than the trains. I'm not sure if there's a reason for that, but whatever. Is Macquarie Park. For Macquarie Shopping Centre, stay on board and arrive at the next station. As I'm sure you've noticed, the Sydney Metro is also mostly underground. Um, it does resurface at Bella Vista, I believe, towards Talawan. Um, and of course it does surface briefly at Chatswood. But for most of its length, if you're standing at the front, this is the view you're gonna get. But still, it's fun to go around like the DLR. Anyway, uh, we're approaching Epping, uh, not far on the central line, um, this one, which is my stop. So, let's get out of here. Alrighty, Epping, wonderful. quick thing of note that I find quite interesting is that all stations, even the above ground ones, have half height platform screen doors. Um, 
yes, the underground ones are still half height, unlike uh, London, where it's usually either full height or nothing. Kind of, for example, with the Elizabeth Line um, Custom House, which is a, an above ground station, does not have any platform screen doors, whereas Woolwich and Canary Wharf and all of the other underground Elizabeth Line stations do have full height platform screen doors. For some reason, we just don't do half height screen doors in Britain. Don't know why. Um, because obviously these help uh, with safety. Um, does make it annoying to film the train, of course, but obviously that's uh, obviously annoying for me, but um, when it helps with safety, you can't really complain about that. What we could have had. <sighs> Alrighty, I'm going to be heading back to Chatswood now, so um, I'll see you there. Oh, one thing I haven't noticed until now is that they've got a USB plugs. Um, don't think any other trains on the Sydney Trains Network have those, although um, from what I've heard from other Sydney siders is that they're not the most reliable. So, um, uh, baby steps, I suppose. Another thing that British trains could uh, do with um, all of this network has 4G, which a lot of the tube is uh, only just getting, certainly including the Elizabeth line, which is brand new. So, yeah, um, well done for that, Sydney Metro. This is an all stop service to Chatswood. The next stop is Macquarie Park. So that was the Sydney Metro and if you heard the noises as the train was leaving and arriving you can see why I say it's similar to the Jubilee line plus the platform screen doors and the underground 4G so that's probably the closest equivalent it's something to do with the motors Anyway, uh, so that was the uh, unique Sydney Metro. Now, onto the Sydney trains, starting with the A set, which is one of the two Waratahs, two very similar trains. The Metro coming in behind me, you'll be able to hear the noise of the Jubilee line if you hadn't earlier. Anyway. Yeah, I'm sure you can hear that. Anyway, um, so the uh, the Waratahs, the A sets and the B sets are extremely similar. So I'm just going to properly review the A set and then I'll just like uh, cut to myself on a B set going through the very, very few differences. So anyway, um, next train will be the A set. The train on platform one goes to England via Central. Alrighty, A set. First thing to notice is that the trains are double decker. So you've got a bottom deck here and a, a top deck up, up there. Um, also, one thing that I absolutely love about Sydney trains, you can do that. You can just, so if you're with friends, then you can sit like that. And if you'd rather not, then you can just flip it back. So. I personally like seeing this configuration, but yeah, I absolutely love this. Anyway, so uh, we're going to uh, the CBD. I'm not entirely sure what's top yet, probably central, but yeah, so let's go. Let's check out the upper deck. Yep, same deal, except 
with a slightly better view. We've got a little uh, priority seating area for if you're in a wheelchair or luggage, and also these uh, carriage doors, but they open easily and are entirely walked through. Right. Um, seat comfort, let's give that a quick test. Again, move that. Um, uh, again, not bad. Um, not the most wonderful, but it's certainly not awful. This train will stop at St. Leonard's. Another good thing is, because you can flip the seat, you get perfect window alignment. As you can see, pretty cool. I mean, obviously, you can just like flip it if you don't care about that. But now it's more outline seating. You can make it perfect window alignment, which is pretty cool. Uh, three plus two seating is the other thing to mention. Um, not that that's too much of a problem, I think Sydney makes it work. Also because it's wider than a lot of British trains and also the stairs mean that things like uh, push chairs and wheelchairs aren't really a uh, priority. Well, they are, but obviously they go in uh, this bit because there's no stairs there. Another thing I've noticed is very wide doors, which is probably good because it means you can fit a lot of people in and out. Also, that is one of the main downsides of double-decker trains. As much as I think they're, they're really cool, is that it means you have less doors per carriage than a uh, single-decker train like the City Metro. Um, however, they've clearly tried to compensate for that by making the doors extremely wide, which means that a lot of people can fit through. Also helpful if you've got luggage, wheelchairs, pushchairs, etc. before this train will cross the famous Sydney Harbour Bridge and you can get a pretty good view of that from the station so I'll poke my head out of the door and get a picture of that for you. There we go, if I just poke my head out here, there's a view. Anyway, I'm getting back on this train and going over the bridge. interlude. Only differences between these and the A sets is uh, these displays above the stairwells which are not present on the A set and um, these uh, which are different sort of pattern information displays to the ones on the A set. Um, the A sets have dot matrix and these have little uh, display screens. Um, also the livery is more orange um, as you can see on that one compared to the uh, A set which I'll probably put up a picture of the two of them to compare. Uh, anyway, that's it. I can literally get off this train now. Um, that's it.
Ah, central. A train spot is paradise. <laughs> I could stand here and just watch all the trains going through the station. That video, uh, the, probably the clip before this one, had uh, three different trains in it. The A, B and T set. Uh, the A was the one I was just on. The B, uh, I've probably already done the B interlude because they are so similar to the A set. And then T set, which is the next one which I am going to be going for. I'm heading for the T4. And uh, let me just check out if I'm the right way. Um, yes, I am. Um, yeah, Central is a massive station. There's, I think, 27 platforms? Um, there, there's a lot. Um, and yeah, I'm going for the T set, and I will probably be heading for Walleye Creek. So, yeah. Giving me strong London Bridge vibes here. Alrighty, so the T4 at Central is uh, down these stairs. Um, I believe there is also an accessible route. Um, alrighty. Uh, yeah, seven minutes. This is a tea set Tangara. Um, first thing to note here is that the seats don't flip. Um, they do on uh, all of the other Sydney trains, uh, but not these. Um, these are the second oldest and the, uh, the K sets are the oldest and you'll see those probably closer to the end. Um, the seats here are more comfortable than the Waratahs, the Waratahs being the, in the B sets in case uh, I hadn't already mentioned. Um, yeah, um, the other thing is uh, the windows aren't the best for viewing out of. You'll probably see that when we get outside. So uh, as we leave Redfern, um, there is a seemingly no PID at all. And also the, the PA announcements are so muffled, uh, it's really hard to actually make out what they're saying. So um, yeah, that's not great. You can sort of see here, uh, in, the, in the clips around this uh, one, you can see how the windows are a bit frosted over. Um, yeah, it's quite hard to actually uh, get a decent view out the window. Uh, which is a shame, because these trains go to places like uh, Waterfall, which are really scenic. Um, anyway, uh, one thing to note about these trains is, while there are some serious parts lacking, uh, they are due for a refurb, um, which will improve the PA and also improve disability access among uh, a few other things, um, which is good. Uh, so while there are problems with it, they will be getting a refresh, hopefully quite soon. So um, the Tangaras are not totally walk through. Um, as you can see, there's kind of two four coach units stuck together, whereas most of the rest of the trains are one eight coach unit. Anyway, um, here's Walleye Creek, where I'll be getting off. And I'll be changing to, I believe, an H set, uh, which will take me back up to Central or Redfern. One of the two. Wonderful. Alrighty, so uh, that was the T set Tangara. Anyway, um, one quick thing to mention about those um, is that there are some variants that do have the flip seats. They are uh, former G sets that were converted into T sets. Um, however, most of them uh, don't have the. Uh, which I showed on the Waratahs and 
that uh, all of the other trains uh, do have. Alrighty, a uh, quick note about the uh, T-Set Tangaras. Um, these ones, which you can show by the uh, old uh, door panels, um, do actually have flip seats and headrests because they're con converted from uh, a different kind of train. Uh, I think it was a G-Set? Um, there'll be something con correcting me if I'm wrong. Um, anyway, uh, I think someone said it was a anything over T100 is uh, one of these uh, converted ones. So, yeah, that's just uh, good to know. Um, anyway, I've got a bit of a wait here, so um, hopefully um, my next train will be an H-Set, uh, which are kind of the more intercity services. They go, uh, they are operated by city trains sometimes, but they usually do um, sort of regional services towards places like Wollongong or Newcastle. Um, anyway, so I'll see you for that. Alrighty, uh, we are at Walleye Creek. Um, this is the H set. Um, these ones often do the intercities. Um, had a bit of a mishap because um, something told me that this was cancelled, but um, it wasn't. Um, also, this is a four coach train. Um, they're usually coupled up, but uh, this one isn't. Uh, it's terminating at Central um, on the uh, South Coast Line. Um, and, uh, another uh, information display board above the uh, stairwell, like on the B sets. Uh, that's... Alrighty, uh, toilets. Uh, no other train uh, on the uh, City Trains network has these. Um, Looks pretty really grim in there though, so I'm uh, not gonna go in there. Um, what's going on here? Um, yeah, we've got the, uh, the flip seats again, uh, and, and we can sit by the window and enjoy the view. Um, again, um, uh, foot rests and uh, kind of arm rests here. Again, which makes sense. Uh, yeah, head rests, that's the other one. Yep, these. Um, uh, they're not the most comfortable to be honest. They're kind of comparable to the Waratahs, which uh, isn't too bad. Um, there's another eight set coming the other way, um, which wouldn't be too bad. But these do kind of go to places like Wollongong and uh, Newcastle. So um, obviously the uh, footrest helps though. Um, uh, yeah, that, yeah, but like the seat padding itself, it's not bad. It's just not wonderful. So I've decided to get out here at Redfern um, because there's uh, not a whole lot else to say. Um, uh, there are also quiet carriages on these trains because they do uh, sort of do regional slash intercity services. Um, so, yeah. Alrighty, only uh, two trains to go now. Um, the M set and the K sets. The K sets only operate peak services, so I've got to wait until the uh, sort of evening peak to uh, get those. Um, so next will be the M set. Um, let's see if I can find one of those. It was quite funny that the H set I was just on, which has footrest, still had people putting their feet on the seats, which I believe gets you a $400 fine over here, um, which is about 200 pounds at current exchange rate. trying to find an M set. Um, I've been told that they do the Olympic Park Shuffle from Lidcombe, so uh, I'm on this train uh, heading to Lidcombe and then I'll definitely be getting an M set. Definitely. <laughs> Sure enough, there is an M set over there. I'm not going to make that one, but I uh, will make it when it returns here because um, obviously this is the Olympic Park Shuttle, which is a uh, one stop. Also, it's four coaches. They are usually eight, but that shouldn't really impact the review at all. Alrighty, Lipcombe, off to the shuttle.
Wow, another platform zero. Are there any other examples in Australia? I've got no clue, but that's interesting. Okay, so uh, this train behind me is the M set. Finally got that. Um, I'm just going to take it around the shuttle of Olympic Park and then uh, back here to Lidcombe and then uh, I will finally search for the K set, which will complete the fleet review. So without any further ado, let's go. Alrighty, uh, to be honest with you, these are really quite similar to the Royal Tile. There are, there are noticeable differences, um, and just like the, with the design, but the seats do still flip. But this one is a, take a bit more effort than some of the Royal Tile ones. Um, uh, yeah, sort of same deal. They've got a PID and uh, same thing I mentioned about the uh, about the window alignment. I think all of Sydney trains have a pretty good window alignment, to be honest with you. Um, it's red button instead of green to open the doors. I think most of the buttons are green, certainly on the Warwick tiles. Anyway, um, yeah, so um, all this faff to just to say that they are really quite similar to the Warwick tiles. <laughs> um, but, yeah, whatever. Oh, I've just noticed footrest. It's not a movable one like the uh, H set, but it's there. I don't think the other ones have that. Um, I'll double check, but I don't think they do. If they do, I've never noticed, and this is just like my first time noticing, and I, I feel a bit dumb, but um, yeah, so uh, that's cool. Quick side note. Love that they have these at stations. Because you get some water here. I wish Britain had more of those. So I am back at Lidcombe. Uh, so that was the uh, M set. Not much else to say about that. Um, they're also known as the Millennium sets because they came in in about 2000. I think that might actually be why they are the M set in particular. Anyway, um, there's just one train left to review and that is the K set. Uh, I'm waiting here at Lidcombe for that. Um, it should be coming in a bit less than 10 minutes. Uh, so I'm gonna get that back to Central to finish off the fleet review. Let's go. The train on platform three goes to City Circle via Town Hall. First stop, Flemington, Homewood, Stratford, Homewood, Colwyn, Ashfield, Newtown, Central, Town Hall, Wingate, Circle Queen, St. James, and Museum. Alrighty, K set, the oldest of the Sydney trains. Right, so um, not walk through. Um, that's one thing to note. Um, uh, as you can see, um, these are significantly different to the rest of Sydney trains. No PID. Um, the seats. Are oh, very comfortable though. That is something to note. Um, uh, and they do also flip. It's just a bit more complicated because you have to kind of like do that with it. So I'm gonna like uh, push it like that. Hard to do with one hand, but yeah. And uh, these do also have footrests. Um, I did check all of the trains have footrests. I'm just dumb and have managed to miss it this whole time. Anyway, um, yeah. Uh, the windows are significantly more clear than the Tangaris, even though these are older than the Tangaris. I do notice that these trains are also uh, quite a bit louder than all of the other ones. Um, so, yeah, that's uh, a. That, that, that kind of makes it a bit difficult to film because obviously. Loud, so it's probably joining up my voice. I'm sorry, it was not the best. Now, uh, I'm actually quite a fan of these trains. Um, I will say 
believe that they are not long in this world, though. Um, they are set to be replaced sometime in uh, probably a couple of years by the H sets, the, the ones you saw on the Intercity line. Um, they're being cascaded to more suburban services uh, in order to replace these, which are uh, undoubtedly getting on a bit. So, yeah, um, if you're in Sydney and you like these trains, make sure to get on them while you still can. They're already uh, peak hours only uh, on all the lines that they serve. So, yeah, uh, make sure to get on these while you can. I can't escape. <laughs> I don't think it's supposed to do that. <laughs> Alrighty, Central Station. And that is the fleet review done. So here, outside Sydney Central Station, is where I will conclude the video. Thank you for watching. There will be a couple more Australian videos coming from me, uh, from my trip. Um, so if you want to see more Australian content, uh, stick around. Um, hopefully you'll enjoy that. Obviously this channel does mostly focus on British stuff. Um, so if you're a new subscriber, uh, then uh, yeah, obviously you'll be getting mostly British stuff. But there's a couple more Australian things in the works. Anyway, uh, thank you for watching. Uh, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. We've got a Patreon if you are feeling generous or a YouTube membership. Uh, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.